Unlike who we're going to be talking about on this episode, me and Dennis are not going to beat around the bush. Because we, we have a finite amount of time today. We are going to be talking about, just to bring a little levity, as me and Dennis just had a very serious conversation about his life and then mine, mostly his. <laughs> we are going to be talking about Dan. Hold her tighter. She's a fighter. Schneider. Schneider. All and right. his sidekicks, Brian Schmeck. Brian just... Brian, rape is piece of shit. Let's just go with that. It's, yeah. not, cle- it's not clever, <laughs> but we'll just it's, go yeah, with that. Really Brian Guys, Peck, so- and I believe Jason Handy. We can't forget about Jason him. Jason Handy. Why that is his one- last name Handy? I know! Oh, like, oh, that fucking <laughs> last name. That is like the last name of a pedophile. It would be. It fucking would be. Like... <laughs> Like, so guys, Christ, in case if you, Christ almighty. Guys, in case you don't know what the fuck we're talking about, in case you've been under a rock for the last, like, week, we have watched uh, The Quiet On Set, a docuseries about uh, Nickelodeon and Dan Schneider and uh, his merry bunch of uh, kid touchers. And, um... Uh... <laughs> and uh, I will be... I actually watched it... <laughs> oh, David's losing his shit over there. Why'd you why'd you have to say Mary? <laughs> this was supposed were, to be a, this bro, was supposed to be doing... a somber episode. Me and Dennis <laughs> just had a serious real life talk for a while. And of I course know I'm not bringing levity to the fact that these kids I were I know affected. you're not. I'm, I'm I'm talking about myself, the fact that I left I awkwardly laughed through the documentary. And not in the sense that what I'm watching was funny, but then in the sense that like the tension so of those fucking... the tension yeah, exactly. The tension of those situations was palpable that I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> like, it was just <laughs> so <laughs> like palpably oh. awkward. And, like, for me, I actually... Um, okay, guys, so, yeah, we're talking about Quiet On Set. Uh, we're, for this episode today, we're just going to be mostly talking about this because, like, I mean, it's been the talk of the town for the last, like, fucking week and a half. Yeah. And, like, you know, just everyone kind of has just been buzzing about it. And uh, I'm going to be real. Uh, I watched it with my sister. First two episodes were pretty fucking rough. And then the last bit of the second episode we saw drake bell come on and i was just not ready for that second half afterwards like i did i had no idea like at all you told me you stopped watching it like for a while after episode two because you're like this is fucking rough yeah the way i guess spoilers it's a documentary but like spoiler alert in case you haven't watched it yet but like you know you probably should I mean, you know, this may trigger you, like, anyone who may watch this, like... In a, I'll put a trigger know, warning in the title, yeah, yeah. maybe, or in the description. God forbid, if, if you did go through something like this, like, you know, you know, don't want to be, like, any part of that to, like, kind of add fuel to the fire and such. But, you know, for uh, anyone who watched it, you know, I was, like, Initial thoughts. Yeah, your like, initial I, thoughts are what yeah, you're starting at out At least with, the first yeah. two episodes when I before I stopped and went back and watched the three and four again. Uh, just to like finish up, uh, I was uh, it was like a mix of like I knew it was bad, like all the shit that was going on. Like I knew it was bad. I, I didn't think it was like I realized that bad. Can I add to <laughs> like, that real quick? Yeah, I very much expected, and even in the first 10, 15, 20 minutes of the doc, to just be this uh, to just be like, how do I phrase it? To literally mm. just be. <sighs> An expose or way of grander outreach, I should say, to normal people who don't waste their spend their lives on Twitter, who knew all this shit about Schneider for years. Yeah. I thought it was just going to be like, oh, like people who like go like clock out of work at five o'clock. I'm going to turn on HBO Max, see what's on HBO Max to watch. Oh, what's this documentary? This seems interesting. What the Mm -hmm. fuck? Like, (laughs) Like to people who don't know about it. I fully expected Quiet on set to be... Not much new information, mm-hmm. and it was just going to be a bunch of shit that we didn't know about All Dan. That's kind of regurgitated that we heard from like everywhere else. But it's fine because it goes to a grander audience for people who don't like spend mm-hmm. their lives on Twitter. Nope, it reveals a lot of new shit yeah. about Schneider stuff that we did not know about. I had no no idea the shit about the women writers on his staff. Yeah, that, that also... was wild. Yeah. The fact that also one of the big things wasn't like the biggest thing, I guess, com- com- amidst like everything else that had happened to them, like the women writers, but the fact that they shared a salary. Like, I thought like, you know, just even from like an occupational standpoint, that's wild to me that you share in one position's fucking salary 
and then also just amidst like all like the uh sexual harassment that they were going through like being there and like just also like you could feel like that it was it was not their world for them like those two that were on uh the writers team i forgot their names but like you know if anyone's Christy watching stratton. you know what i'm talking about christy stratton was the big one she was the one with like yeah. the sort of the the bold and the mode cut haircut the one that she, she actually the looked one- great believe it or not like i yeah, think she yeah. grew like she grew beautifully i was oh, like oh you're kidding absolutely yeah, yeah. and um the, when schneider uh, yeah. And apparently, you know, like, fat fuck Schneider thought the same thing, but just didn't know how to, like, respect people, people about it. Like, the shit of taking advantage of the fact that she was broke. I'll give you $300 if you, like, down this ice cream sundae God knows how long. She did it. And then he wouldn't pay her the yeah. money. And then when she's the only one with the balls to call him out on it, drags him to his office like just like this a fucking teenager said something bad, yeah. dragging to the principal's office. Don't ever disrespect me in front of people again like this, blah, blah, blah. It's like, mm-hmm. you're the one like not hedging on your bets. Why are you gaslighting her? Yeah, exactly. And then the other one, that woman's name, I unfortunately did forget, when she wound up being the only writer left in that room because he fired Christy Stratton for taking yeah. any personal time. When he said like, oh, didn't you used to do phone sex? When, oh, he brought, yeah. when she brought up oh. some concerns to him? The gaslighting was insane. Yeah, it really was. My and God, I had no idea <sighs> the shit about like the the women writers on his staff. Like that was really like the hard hitting like new information in yeah. the first episode at least. Mm, yeah, that yeah. came out about that because more shit just came out throughout the other episodes that I was yeah. just continually shocked about. Like I, I know as far as even like kind of just the because uh, like, there was so much like because all that and Amanda show and a bunch of the stuff that like kind of at least they went into in the last uh, in the first couple episodes was all products of like my childhood really like oh, shit. you know just they're dropping another episode episode 5 apparently it wasn't done the fuck Appar- apparently it wasn't done i i just i just pulled up this article it says quiet on set episode 5 to feature new drake bell interview oh it might be just kind of like the uncut version i guess cuz like it probably is just all the stuff they couldn't fit in for episodes three and four, and they figured, okay, we could like we have enough footage that we could like put this in episode five. And uh, not to mention, going into Drake Bell for a sec, I really felt for him. Like, not gonna lie, like I know, like you know, amidst like all the allegations that like we heard of, like thing you know before, and you know, eventually it becoming like you know just it was basically unfounded. And you know, the main thing was was that he cheated on his wife, you know, with with the uh, with the girl, like. And just hearing like all of like the the abuse he received, like thing when he was um when he was younger and like bef- I think this was all even he said before Drake and Josh even fully aired. So like the guy who was um like uh who was abusing him, uh what was it Brian Peck, right? That's that's the one, yeah. yeah. Like, you know, just hearing all of that, like and the then there was that one scene when uh his girlfriend's mom like fucking awesome lady too from like at least from what i know of off the documentary she like you know told him like hey like can i talk to you for a sec and like you know actually like asked him like you know because fucking brian peck apparently was calling him like non-stop at his uh, girlfriend's house yeah which is insane to me like even just off of that and then you know she went and asked like you know that is a 40 year old man calling you and asking where you are and he is, and no normal forty-year-old does that. And she asked him, if "She, I would, I don't want to chalk her up to say like that she was like whip smart, but like at the very least, her, she had really great intuition and knew something was fucking going on. And like, you know, I want to know what it is. So, yeah. and she asked him, and you know, she, uh, he, I don't, I don't remember if he did tell her." But, what happened was, I think he kept it a, quiet for just a little bit longer, and then he yeah, was on, yeah. Drake was on the phone with his mom, and then it just and came out. And that's when he blew up. Yeah, It, like, it just, just exploded, and it all yeah. came out. Because, like, you know, again, trigger. We, we listed the trigger warnings already, but, like, we all need to fill out the Drake Bell apology forms. Like, mm-hmm. not even as a joke this time. Like, yeah. not like the Chris Pratt apology forms. Where I'm like, no, I think he's gonna be too good as Mario. Like, not like not shit that doesn't matter like that. Like, legit. Because Drake Bell was the punching bag of the internet for yeah. so long, and, like, none of us realized, why would we? Because we didn't know the full story, that th- the reason this hit so different is because it explained everything about Drake. 
his mm-hmm. DUI, you know, like the shit, like with the child endangerment, him fleeing to Mexico, like yeah. all of that stuff, it just all adds up because he had so much taken away from him. This fucking actual rapist succeeded in getting his father away from him when his father was the one who saw through it the entire time. And where the fuck was Drake's mom this whole time that she was fine with her child staying with this guy? After Drake's father warned his mom, do not leave Drake alone with this prick. Where the fuck was she during all this? Genuinely, where the hell was his mom? I'm not putting all the blame on his mom, but she failed him. Full oh, stop. Yeah, like, absolutely. She fucking she failed, failed him. She absolutely Thank God failed him. that Drake actually wound up just dating some girl whose mom uh, apparently wasn't a gave moron. A shit. And just gave a shit and actually saw through this. At least Drake's mom did the right thing when, you know, Drake's, Drake told her about it. Like she, like, she called the cops, sat with him about it. But at, at, that, at that point, that's too little too late. For yeah. lack of a trigger warning right here, like, I guess spoilers. Episode 2 ends in the most sombering way possible. Because it, it starts talking about Brian Peck, who yeah. was the biggest predator at Nickelodeon, mm-hmm. who was known as the pickle guy. There was a joke, he would show up in every episode with a giant <sighs> fucking plate of pickles. He would slip them yeah. through doors to Ray Romano like a glory hole, and Ray Romano would suck on it like a dick. That was really weird that they made him do that. I, I guess that paycheck was pretty fat. But, uh, yeah. Uh, he was the biggest predator of them all, because he was trying to, like, isolate Drake, take Drake away from his father, who was his manager at the time, and whatnot. He eventually succeeded in doing that because he straight up convinced Drake that this guy's holding you back. And that he was afraid to tell Brian Peck no, because that's going to risk his career going on, yeah. as is with all these Hollywood First stories. First class manipulator. This is the pre-Me Too movement. You couldn't complain about hostile work environments. There's no internet to let people know about it. You know, it's different with just, like, reporting it to, like, police or reporting it to news outlets or whatever, whether they choose, because that goes on if they choose to report about it or not. We dog on Twitter a lot, but it's done a lot of good for, like, you know, the betterment of certain work environments and shit like that. But the point is, for... Episode 2 ends in the most sombering way possible in that there it, it uh Schneider and like all the producers they hold a meeting with like all the kids and everything they're saying hey Brian has been arrested he's not going to be working on these these shows anymore anybody have any questions nope there's silence and then they keep going on but then there was talk amongst everybody they're like who was it like who who did he molest who did he harass and then it just immediately cuts to like a dark interview setting and then Drake Bell appears and just sits down. He doesn't say anything. You don't hear anything from the interviewer yet. Drake doesn't say anything. And that's how the episode ends. Just silence like that. Mm-hmm. My head was in my hair <laughs> when I saw that shit. Because I was like, that makes so much fucking sense. Yeah. Like, it all just added up. I knew that Drake wasn't a fucking monster. I knew it. And we dogged on him for mm. it so hard. Oh, yeah. We would sing songs and change the lyrics to Found a Way. Yeah. It was so bad. Yeah. They're like, I'm gonna pay some fans uh. and serve some time. Ooh. Oh, man. That and those memes those. were funny as fuck when we thought, like, when we you know, thought he, he was just, like, when we thought monster. he was just an asshole, that he was yeah. just a monster. But nope. Like so many of these monsters, quote unquote, it's the system that corrupted them. And it also kind of goes back to me even saying, like, how, like, you know, even I thought, like, you know, when, I, when we were dogging on him, like, we don't even know, like, the actual, like, full story. And, like, you know, eventually we got it, like, years later. And I do feel bad. I do feel bad for, uh, like, you know, for kind of, like, already pointing the finger and saying, ha, ah, you, you know, he touches kids. Like, you know, I actually did feel bad, like, after watching that. And, like, it just kind of goes to show, like, you know, at least in his case, it's like he cheated on his wife. So that was still a scummy fucking thing to do. Like, you know, obviously, but like, and I'm not like, you know, Whatever. saying any of the, uh, So did JFK and he wait, prevented wait, 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 fucking wait. nuclear holocaust. Wait, 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 Because I at least want to compartmentalize this here where it's like amidst all the new shit that we kind of found out about him, right? It's like you can't wash out the good with the bad or the bad with the good either. And And in the case of like, you know, everything that he was even going through uh, before he had that hearing and like you know before he got mean to death like bro was just in like a dark place and like it's really sad that like you know he didn't even get the help like he really needed and for a while he couldn't even say anything about like everything that happened the years the years before he just couldn't say anything and that's 20 like a t- years that is like 20 years of you carrying that secret, essentially. 
Like that would eat up anybody. It's inside. like literally like, the only people who knew about it was like, you know, obviously the like some of the other producers at Nickelodeon, his mom and his dad, really, yeah. and I think his brother. Like, like it's just his family knew about and it. And they just didn't keep it in touch with anybody else. Oh, the whole fucked up thing about like all those Hollywood writers defending Peck. Yeah, or like all that those whole Hollywood courtroom. people. James like, Marsden. James <sighs> Marsden. And granted, we don't know the whole story there either. Not all of these people. Who knows? Who touchers. knows? Not even all of. Not even that they're kid touchers, but not all of these people legitimately knew he was a kid toucher. You know, the Quiet on Set documentary people, they reached out to some of those um, people who defended Brian Peck mm -hmm. with the new information. And they regretted it, yeah. And they, and they straight up said, like, if, holy fuck, like, if we had known that, sh that shit was true, we never would have done it. Great I assault, because who it up knows? To convenience. Because it's like. What are they going to say? Like, I have a feeling it's like a mix of, like, a lot of them just genuinely didn't know. And then a lot of them also did know, but they just chose not to say anything. Yeah. Like, because, like, I know plenty of people, like, you know, I think ignorance is, like, a universal thing. And it's going to affect any sort of industry or, like, kind of workplace. And for a lot of people, they just kind of don't seek out to find shit out. They just kind of, like, you know, just don't care. Or at the very least, like, they just kind of don't really, again, like, they seek it. And in the case of, like, you know, at least Brian Peck and that huge courtroom of support that, like, uh, that came out to, um, you know, support him, like, kind of just even, like, you know, seeing the notes afterwards and, like, them, them kind of then, uh, you know, later on in the documentary kind of saying like, oh, this and this person that like, kind of regretted like kind of uh, supporting uh, Brian Peck amidst all this stuff. Like, you know, if they had known, like you said, they wouldn't have done it. And I kind of just sort of like, again, like I, I chalked that up to kind of just being like in a mix of ignorance and also just kind of like, you know, they knew. Because there's no way they didn't know a lot of them. I guarantee you a good Are chunk of kidding? them probably knew. Yeah. Every episode of Quiet on Set literally ends with the statement that Nickelodeon made when they reached out to them about how we care and try to foster a safe environment and whatnot. They While knew every too. episode just proves that they didn't. Oh, dude, that's the whole thing about Schneider. Yeah. Is that, you know, they kept putting him under the rug for years. We knew, this is the stuff we knew before the documentary mm -hmm. about how they just kept like putting him under the rug for years because Disney Channel came in with all their, you know, kids sitcoms and stuff yeah. and schneider was the only thing saving them from just completely going under to disney he was like yeah. their golden boy and he really was the guy had mm. an uncanny ability to just know what made kids laugh he knew how to keep things fresh like when they took we're talking about iCarly and how that show was so culturally relevant at the time because mm -hmm. it was the dawn of the new age of apple and the internet mm -hmm. and iphones becoming new and web series being this new thing like we knew it was a new emerging technology and that show came out at the best possible time for it which really oh, contributed yeah. to iCarly's success and whatnot so it, it was literally just a matter of money talks you know they knew the shit about oh, Schneider, absolutely. but they just weren't gonna fucking get rid of him because like they, they knew if they did, they were toast. And to go back mm -hmm. to Schneider for a second, mm -hmm. he assaulted Amanda Bynes. There's no oh. way. He, there's no fucking way he did not and, assault Amanda Bynes. The hot tub yeah. shit. The fact that he would take her alone to his dressing room for hours. Yeah. <laughs> Quiet on set reached out to Amanda Bynes. They wanted to interview her. She declined. Which kind of tells me two things. Because, one, a lot of these kids took hush money. They had to. And, like, they're under, I feel, a lot of, like, kind of legal shit that they... That they just cannot, like, speak about it. Because, like, there's just, just going to be... Don't want to talk about it. I, I wouldn't no, go no, straight no, to no, like the hush like, money. It's I no. I think it's a mix of it though. Like, and I think if for at least Amanda Bynes' case, like I could see that, like just for personal reasons. Like, and like I don't want this to kind of like spill over. Like, I don't want to put myself on camera and reveal to the to the world that like I was assaulted by like this monster. Like for a lot of times, like people will decline interviews like that just because of the fact that like you know they just hate the spotlight or that sort of thing. Yeah, and in Drake's Bell's case, like you know I. I like to think for him, it's just like he felt as if like if there was any time right now that I will get to talk about this, fuck it, let it be now. Yeah, but and, I'm gonna, I got to give Bynes the benefit of the doubt there. She might have just not been ready to talk about it, homie. You remember last year she was running around naked on the streets of L.A., literally begging somebody to like just take her to a, like a mental health facility because she was having like a horrendous breakdown. I, dude, I just – I don't think she's ready to face that part of her life yet. No, no, no. Like I'm not – I'm not discounting like of course like what – she's been going through and like what she is going through like i'm just saying though that there is a lot of powers that be like powers that be like you know right now in place that's like 
it's kind of hard for them to just kind of go and freely say like, yeah, fuck it. Like, thing, I'll go on, uh, you know, on uh, Quiet on Set and I kind of just tell my story. Because you saw a lot of the ones that they got weren't really like, you know, too prominent. Like, as far as like the shows, uh, at least part of the shows. Like, Drake Bell was probably arguably like, I think the most like, famous one that we got in that entire thing that's another reason that the ending of episode two was so sombering because like when he sat down and said nothing no text on screen it was the documentary saying you know who the fuck this is yeah you know who this is the other ones we had to put their names up they were really young because we were didn't completely know who the fuck they were exactly. we really didn't exactly we don't remember all these people and all that per- specifically is just a little before my time i was yeah, really yeah. young i don't even remember that really amanda is the big one because amanda mm-hmm. was dan's golden boy gave her her own like you know uh variety show and whatnot like a little kid's tracy ullman basically or like mm-hmm. uh carol uh carol burnett basically like a kid's yeah. carol burnett and whatnot it's just drake was the harrowing one you know yeah. that that was the harrowing one and the whole story as if we didn't say it before drake bell was the worst victim of them all with brian peck like he sodomized him at least of the ones we know of the ones we know. Of like, the ones we know. God forbid, like, there's probably even, like, some that are worse than Drake. God but forbid. Potentially, yeah. Like, I still really do in my heart of hearts believe that, like, I do believe that Schneider assaulted Amanda Bynes. They're, I, like, oh, what, what else were they doing alone that whole time? There's no fucking Fuck way. Man. For them to be that I close. I agree with 100%. Was, for them to be that close, it was mad weird. And then, of course, there's the other one. Jason... Uh, Jason Hansy. I cannot fucking... That you cannot How make that How is that, that a up. last name? You cannot How make that, that up. How is that last name? You cannot make that up. It could have been like, you know, some old Westing, some old West type no, last name. No, no, no. Where they were dude. like, we're going to rename us to Handy because we're we're Handy and we we help people I don't out. Care That's the kind what of thing era. people change. Their- I don't care what era you live in. A Handy means what a Handy yeah. is, man. Handy. Everyone knows what a Handy is. And Jason Handy, right? He was in the prime position to like really be the biggest molester of them all, truly, because he was literally the kid's handlers. That's what he, that's what his job was. He was their handler. He was the one who told them where to go, what to go, when to do it. Would while take them touching away, them. While take yeah. them away from their parents sometimes. He was the one who, it was Brandy, <sighs> who was only on like all that for like a year or something even less than that, who left because of the abuse or some shit. Or was she fired? I don't even remember. There was a lot of information. They didn't interview her. They interviewed her mom, who yeah. I also think, you know, didn't do the right thing. She didn't call the police oh, when this yeah, shit happened yeah. because mm-hmm. she was like, you know, they're going to think I'm a bad mom. So you take... made yourself a bad mom by doing the wrong thing? Granted, if you were in that situation, it's a high-pressure, high-stress environment. It's a scary yeah. thing to do. You don't always know what the right thing to do is. But, you know, at the same time, the fact that she pushed her daughter into show business like that because she wanted to do it, but then her mom wouldn't let her, and then that's why her daughter wound up being abused. living through your children. Like a less, like a less famous Jeanette McCurdy. Because that's mm-hmm. what her mom was. Who they didn't get her. They, they didn't get McCurdy to interview about it either. That was interesting. I would assume I they would have reached though, out to her. I feel as if though McCurdy already kind of like you know, like she already told her story enough, you know. And it's that's like probably you know, how she felt. if you want to hear it, it's all out there. You can find it. Like I'm not like I don't sugarcoat it. At all. I made a fucking book about the fact that my mom is dead. Yeah, and I'm happy about it. And he so, refers like, you know, to for the her, creator. Like, why would I need to come on this? Yeah. And also refers to the creator and, like, all of his, like, harrowing decisions. Yeah, who we all know who the fuck it is. I mean... It doesn't really leave that much to imagination, in my opinion. Like, we all know who the fuck it is that she's talking about. Did not take a genius, really, to figure out out that point. But, you know, Brandy was a big one as well. Yeah, go ahead. I just wanted to say one thing, too, about, like, this documentary. And, like, there's something that I really almost kind of even hate about these documentaries is that, like how do i say this like because it's like i know you know on one hand of course like someone will argue that like okay yeah the stories of these kids adults now they have to be told of course like you know this has to be out there now like you know people have to know about what happened and for like you know in the case of drake bell and like because he was John Doe in that whole case with uh, with Pre- with Peck. He wasn't really he wasn't named like at all, and it wasn't until again, yeah, like much later that he, again he revealed that yeah, all of that shit and all that you know uh, evidence that I gave was all it all came from me, and it's I'm the reason why that Brian Peck is like went, went to jail, and like it's 
it's just the fact that I know for this documentary, it's meant to tell a story. It's meant to do a great thing. It's meant to kind of finally shed some light on this horrible, horrible thing that happened. The abuse, sexual harassment amidst all of that shit, like everything combined. Like, it's great that they put it out there, right? But it's like, I also just kind of hate that this was made. I don't know if this was made for like truly just kind of like altruistic reasons and like kind of just because like, you know, they still were profiting off of this. Like, you know, like they're still going to profit off of these people's suffering. And like, you know, the fact that they made a four episode fucking documentary about it and all like and I think. I, I mentioned this to my sister, and I was even saying, like, that whole shit about uh, Dahmer, which was a Netflix show, and it was very heavily sensationalized, but from what I heard, they didn't even talk to the victims, I heard, about, like, that whole shit. They just kind of took whatever was out there and just kind of, like, made it. And to a certain extent, it also, like, you know, people were still, like, hypersexualizing fucking Dahmer. I mean, I, you could even chalk that up to, like, kind of the internet's just backward-ass brain about that. Because, like, they just love to, like, you know, sexualize, like, fucking murderers for some reason. Like, they just love doing that. And, like, you know, I just kind of hated, though, like, that I wish I could have heard from their production company, whoever made this. Uh, I'm pretty sure it wasn't HBO Max, but, like, you know, whoever, like, you know, was part of their platform or whoever. I wish I could have heard that, like, this was not going to be for profit. Because... I really despise the idea of people profiting off of someone else's suffering. Like, I know, like, okay, again, one on one hand, yeah, they're here to tell the story. And, like, it should be told. I'm not saying nothing about that. Like, it's a great thing they did that. But it's just the fact that I also know that you guys are all taking a fucking paycheck out of these people's suffering, essentially. You're putting it all out there for everyone to know now. And, you know, that's off of their, uh, that's off of the old own interviewee's volition, right? Like, they chose to be on there. But it's still like, you know, I am still making money off of their suffering. And like, I almost sort of wish like I because like I know a lot of these uh, documentaries like thing, they, they are necessary to a certain extent. I will acknowledge that at least like their stories have to be told. It's something that we didn't know. And it's just like the public has to know about it now. But on one hand, too, it's just like, like the idea of. All these people and their suffering are just now like being just put on screen and then getting profited off of because like, you know, they also knew that people are going to watch this. Of course, they're going to watch this. I watched it. Everyone else in the world, like in the States probably and even everywhere else, like probably watched it. Like, it's, I don't know. Like, it's like the one like fucking thing that like amidst everything good out of this like documentary. It's just that one fucking thing that always bothers the shit out of me. Is this that, like, it's not like, okay, yeah, like, you know, when it came to, like, World War II documentaries, right? And we get, like, ones about the Holocaust. It's like, you know, for those, it's like, I almost feel like the frame of time is just so far ahead, like, ahead now from where we were then to now. That it's like, you know, it's fine to kind of uh, uh, present that because it's for educational purposes. But I know for this, it's like not just even for like, let's say, quote unquote, like educational purposes. It's meant for shock value, too, in my opinion. Like they did the stupid fucking all like zoom ins and outs like thing all the time. I knew like thing. It was just kind of like I'm not saying that. OK, yeah, like this is just like sensational garbage. Like I know like I did like resonate everything that was going on. And like I felt for everybody that like went through that abuse. I just sort of like, you know, in the back of my head, I was just kind of like, well, they made money off of this. Dennis, like, that's the same thing as adding laugh tracks to sitcoms. And when you mm -hmm. remove them, you realize they're not that funny. Yeah. It's the same thing. It's about it's a matter of like the directorial style of documentaries that adds to the drama of it and like lets the audience like it conveys to the audience the severity and the seriousness of the situation. Yeah. And while yes, it is for profit, I will say the fact that they had at least interviewed the victims and let their voices be heard as well as using, you know, HBO Max and like the money that, you know, like 
the budget that they gave them for this mm -hmm. documentary and stuff to amplify that message is part of just how like you know word of these things spread as opposed to it being I just know, like, you know, know he said she said's on twitter and just like you know having it be like all in text form where the shit's not taken seriously aside from like the me too movement with which changed a lot about workplace environment yeah. and even dating to a certain extent Mm -hmm. The Dahmer documentary, I agree with what you're saying. They don't interview, like, they don't interview, like, the fucking victims they or anything that like that. They strictly for shock value not... and money. That's there what I'm no saying. There was no other reason for it. That's the kind of thing that they make solely because it sells. Yeah. They make this in part because it sells, and HBO Max isn't going to give a fuck about the stories of these people, unless, yeah. like, they can convince them that it'll sell and people will watch it. But if you have to, like, take advantage of the system to, like, get your message out there, it's one way to do it. That's what you said about AOC constantly, right? About how I AOC kind of needs to get know, a little dirty for I'm like her to get to the position of power <laughs> that we all want her to be in. Yeah. You are right in the sense that like it is for profit, but maybe if like this money goes to like the right people or like they can like, do, do more good hoping. work exposing yeah. it. Who, That's who knows? I, That's something I, we're not going to know until later. Or we might mm -hmm. know now if Dennis is like, you know, sort of right about this and that these people are just going to be like profiting off of these people's suffering. I never thought about it like that because in my mm -hmm. mind... A documentary, at least it's not a biopic. Yeah. Because biopics yeah. are terrible. Those are For dog shit. Part, yeah. Like, the, yeah. even the one about The Godfather, I fucking hated. Like, about the making All of The about, Godfather. Uh, Coppola? Cop Cop yeah, the one about the making of The Godfather, I fucking uh -huh. hated it. Because it was just like, hey, throw an unnecessary sex scene here. This yeah, guy, yeah. brooding <laughs> male sure. attack. It was so fucking cliched by the book and so heavy-handed as well. Should it have been stupid. a documentary series? I don't. It was a. It was a miniseries. It was like. I, but I don't like, think it, it should have been a documentary, though, not like a fucking like you know drama ridden like you know whole uh retelling of how the Godfather well, was made and shit. Biopics are made because they'll sell, and there's an audience. Yeah, yeah. Those people like who think like people make those like because they're authentic and people actually care. Like the Bob Marley mm. one. That's another. That's another one. I'm sure it was. Who knows how accurate it actually is when it's a biopic as opposed to documentary? But biopics are way more entertaining to people. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, you know what I mean? There's drama. There's like plot. There's shit going on. Like, that's and, you why know. I respect the Weird Al one because in lieu of actually being respectful to Weird Al, he's a parody of life itself and parodying yeah. all these songs. They made the biopic as copiously fucking unrealistic as they possibly <laughs> could, deliberately. Yeah. Like when they like when they fucking send him to Vietnam or like the part where he fucks Madonna, like all that ridiculous <laughs> shit that happened. Like it's so absurd, just like how he is. And it's yeah. way more meta, which is why I respect that one. A it lot matches of bio in tone. A like, lot of biopics, they amp up the fucking drama so much. Artistic like, license up the ass, like they which, you know, we've all seen and kind of watched. Like, and there's you know, a minor artistic it. license when it comes to documentaries. And this one, no exception in the sense where, you know, they'll have those zoom ins like dum like in like the yeah. big like noise that plays and they'll show the picture of Schneider. The That's stock they, ass sound effect that we all they know of. Ended every cut, but like it lets <sighs> That's what conveys the proper message to the audience, at least, or, like, conveys the right emotion. The medium <laughs> is the message. That is the golden rule of communications. Yeah. I've said it a million times on the show. When you're playing a video game, the story hits different because you're controlling the action a little bit more. It changes mm -hmm. the pace of the story. God of War would have hit a little different if it's not, like, the beat-em-up that it is, and instead it's just like you're watching a movie. Would have still probably been good because it's an amazing game with great source material, but mm -hmm. it's different when you're watching something. In audio documentaries, a lot of people don't... I've been in audio documentaries before. I was in one recently. People mm -hmm. don't like those as much because they can't see it, and it makes you use your imagination more. Yeah. So the medium is the message. It changes how your mind perceives it. Documentaries have to be set in the right tone. For lack of humor, imagine, right now, Quiet on set. Totally different ballpark. Like, they're trying to go for a totally different message with it. Made by a bunch of scumbags who are trying to make fun of, like, you know, like, people who got touched by kid touchers and stuff. Mm -hmm. And instead they add a fucking laugh track. <laughs> Imagine how different it would feel yeah. watching it. You get what I'm saying? Like, those yeah, sound yeah. effects that they do in it and, like, the different zoom-ins they do on the pictures and whatnot to let you know, hey, this guy's the fucking creep. It helps drive the message home harder than just having nothing but silence in the interviews, as well as having background music carry the action forward. It's the same mm. thing as, like, YouTube interviewers. Like, I know what you're saying, and I totally get it. Like, oh, did they dramatize it up too much? Or more importantly, did they do that to, like, pro uh, profitize off of these people's misery? Mm. And I want to say the answer is yes and no. It, mm -hmm. It's part of, like, living in, like, a late-stage capitalistic society that you kind of have to do these things this way to do some good on a grand scale like this. Because it is part of the system. You have to navigate through it. Because if you don't, then you, chances are you're not going to make any progress. Yeah. As shitty as that sounds and, you know, as shitty as it is, it's really true. Like, you know, guys like Bernie Sanders could never make it because he just refuses to play the game. 
And I almost respect them for it and also hate them for it because it's like you, if you just took like two million worth of dollars of dirty money, you could do so much fucking good with that two million dollars worth of well, dirty money. I mean, the money. Democrats also shut him down because they didn't and the actually, Democrats also shut they him didn't down, actually yeah. want any of the shit that he's doing. I know, I know. But I'm saying though, like, it's, reasons, it's just yeah. one of those cases where like you just have to like get dirty to do some good in a way. Yeah. And I know like, you know, it's, we usually kind of are taught like we shouldn't do that, like flat out, like kind of just stick to our morals and such. But I almost feel in the real world, you kind of do have to get a little dirty. It's just kind of the way it is. And, you know, I'm not disagreeing with that with the guys who made this uh, documentary either. Like, you know, I agree with David a whole hundred percent, like about the, you know, just kind of them kind of having to get a little dirty to like kind of get the message out. Because at least at the very least, you know, at the very least, the message was a was a good thing and it has to be told. But like, I just hate hearing about someone making money off of someone else's misery like i don't know what it is that just fucking fuels that fire in me like that it just annoys the shit out of me when i hear about it because that Dahmer shit really did bother me when i heard about it that like they didn't even ask or interview any of the victims either and like again they made Dahmer into like the heartthrob yeah. Don't forget fucking that ever. All right. That's the kind of shit where they're they're literally just trying to sell a product. Like, hey, we'll yeah. make this. This is a documentary that people watch, but we're doing a good thing. You know, get young people to care about documentaries. What, did, what new thing did it add to the story of Dahmer? It just basically sensationalized him and made it to a point where, like, oh yeah, like he is like a very charming, slightly good-looking psychopath who kills Dennis, people the story that it tells is that like audio um is that um true crime podcasts and true crime shows are the number one most watched things among women and young women especially and that they have a market to sell to here that's they the fucking story them, like that's the fucking insane. story bull stop but getting this one i respect more like not only because it takes oh, no, like, yeah, less I respect creative liberties more, course, but yeah. also because it reveals something more recent Dahmer was get, disgusting is always my thing yeah get like, back to another I predator hated it. yeah man like ugh. It's the worst. Like, you really... And going back to, like, you know, the fucking pedos, like, you would assume that Handy would be the worst of them all because he was literally the kid's handlers. And I don't know if there's anything else we don't know about him, but, like, what we know is that, like, he sent a naked photo of himself masturbating to Brandy. And they... And eventually... I forget how they found out. There was a lot of information in the doc. They did arrest him. Mm -hmm. But Peck was the worst egregious case of them all. Not only because of what he did, but the fact that I want to remind you all right now... He was hired by Disney immediately after his release from yeah. prison. He worked on the sweet life of Zack and Cody. That I did not know. I did not know that either. Apparently that was public information on the internet, but that's the kind of thing that you see, like, you know, very angry Twitter accounts who, like, yell about different shit every day that you eventually get sick of looking at, screaming into the void, that you kind of... I don't know, you tune them out eventually, yeah, especially yeah. if you're not on social media constantly. Documentaries have a way of hitting different, like, you know, of letting, like, a general audience know, which I'm glad more and more people do as they're talking about, you know, this shit. I'm telling my parents to watch it. My father was really interested because he loves documentaries, and he was mm-hmm. he already knew about this case because he wanted to know if Peck had any relation to Josh Peck. And I had that same question when I was watching it as well. Confirmed he does not, by the way. It's just a very, okay, okay. very bad coincidence for Josh Peck. <laughs> yeah. Like, just a very, Imagine Drake very... kept seeing him on set. He's just like... Like, he just, like, he has nothing against Josh, right? But it's just in the back of his head. He's just like, motherfucker. Like, <laughs> I don't know, man. That's That would have been awful if that was true. I know, but yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I guess it's not. I, I You know, I Miranda Cosgrove, I don't know how much she experienced from Schneider. They didn't interview her or anything. You know, you talked about hush money, but if there was anybody who, like, seemed to, like, never speak about any of these things at all, it was her. It's like, definitely her that got that Probably because she money. was the biggest one. Not, 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 I'm not saying she did, but if there was one who no, did, it no would probably... Shame. It, there's no shame if you took it. I'm just saying, though, like, you know, I also understand that it's because of that money. Well, another legally reason... speaking, you're not allowed to talk about it. She didn't go for as much either because, really, McCurdy was the one who got all the attention from Schneider. Yeah, and so maybe 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 Miranda was just safe. I suppose maybe like she she was just like she just, knew, she just saw Dan as like a weirdo, who I probably with, yeah, or who like, I like you know, I I uh, 
who I work for, I guess. But this guy Th makes me bank, and we don't know anything for you, sure. You other than there's, other than there's the fact that there's a woman massaging him, like from the dressing room, or like a woman every from like day. the fucking hair and makeup every day, just like touching him or some shit. And people are scared to say no to to not upset that unsweet side of him or anything. They, I remember they all talked about like, oh my god, it was euphoric when he was gone. Like everybody yeah. said, like it just the environment was so Sigh much nicer. And I can relate to that, you know, from toxic work environments where like one person is gone and you feel like you don't have to fucking walk on eggshells any fucking more yeah yeah that was that was something else but, but what was i saying before cosgrove uh, i lost my train of thought uh, uh, we're gonna have to edit this part out yeah no, i don't space. i, I <laughs> unfortunately i unfortunately do not remember but um yeah har harrowing shit you, you know, this whole, this whole doc. I really firmly expected it to just not be any much new information, mm -hmm. really. But then it's just going to be, hey, it's a documentary that people will watch, like the Dahmer one, and it'll get the message out to a wider audience. It does that. Dahmer had no message. It, does, it had yeah, no, no message. No, that, that was just, like, straight up, like, made for profit. This was... Yeah. This, this was... This was This was different. at least made for the good for the right reasons. I will say that much about this one. I didn't mean to compare it one to one to Dahmer, okay? It's okay, it's okay. Don't Dahmer, worry about no, it. no. Even just talking to the audience here. Because Dahmer was trash. I'm sorry. It was fucking garbage. And garbage as in like, you know, I'm not saying that it was poorly made, but garbage is in the sense as to why it was made to begin with. The story of him had did not have to be told in that way. For one. And number two. The fact that they didn't even reach out to the fucking uh, victims' uh, families. Like, the fuck? <laughs> they have an excuse for that, too. They could just be like, ah, we didn't want to make them relive it. Oh, shit the yeah, fuck. You know, they, it was like, made for... Pro Dude, you see the medium is the message. They tried know, to, like, know, know. They tried to but, amp them up in a different way to appeal to that, like, young woman audience who, like, sexualizes serial killers. That's all it was. This was not that it was more recent yeah. it reveals things we didn't know again like that's what i'm remembering now brian peck hired by disney after he was released he only spent 16 months in jail i don't know how the fuck that happened you know like drake bell was talking about how the only people on his side of the courtroom was him his mom and his brother and then on the other side were like all these like hollywood people who were fucking yeah. defending this prick that's what i that's you know that's what we should go into now to be completely honest like mm -hmm. We stand Dave Chappelle on this show, I will say, for the most yeah. part. He was the one who won the very earliest interviews in the uh, early stage, or mid-stages of his career, I should say, when he went on Oprah, was saying, you know, there's TMZ and all these, these stupid, like, paparazzi shit, yeah, yeah. which I can only imagine would drive kids insane, as it does adults in that way. Mm -hmm. I remember they had a shot of Lindsay Lohan, I think, in here as well, <sighs> you know. Remember, yeah. she started she started doing crack because of, like, all the pressure that that woman mm -hmm. was under. Dave Chappelle, in one of his earliest or, like, interviews in, like, the mid part of his career, said... He was talking about TMZ and, like, all these different, like, you know... Like, like, all oh, like, this celebrity did this. They're fucking crazy. This celebrity did... Can you believe Lindsay yeah. Lohan did sm smoke crack? She's fucking crazy. He said, are all... Are... Is it just a wild coincidence that all these celebrities... Or a good chunk of like Hollywood celebrities that you see on TV and in your favorite movies and shows wind up having these horrible things wrong with them. They have mm -hmm. DUIs or they have drug problems or they like have sex with people they shouldn't have sex with. Are they all just terrible fucking people? Or is there something deep, evil, and demonic in Hollywood that is making them corrupt? That is driving them insane? And if this documentary was just another really sort of offline expose of some shit that we already knew, but in grander detail, of that Hollywood is deeply, insanely fucking corrupt and is ran by pedophiles. It really fucking is. It really actually fucking is. Hollywood was fucked up then and it's fucked up now. Yeah. Like, people thought, like, you know, like going back into its history, like... Yo, know, some of the ones we knew even back then did some crazy shit. Like, so, you know, and it's also like, you know, even the shit with Marilyn Monroe and like kind of how even that whole industry like chew, chewed her up and spit her out as well. And like kind of just like she because she was very fragile, like, you know, as far as like uh all the shit that was going on with her and all the bad press that she was getting. And, you know, the persona that at least we kind of saw, like she kind of like to show that she didn't really care but 
you know, among all of her close friends, like, they all knew, like, it really fucked her up. And because she was, like, the hottest thing for a while. Until she wasn't. Until she wasn't. And that's just Hollywood the way it is. Like, thing, you know, they will use you for all your worth and kick you down the curb because they don't need you anymore. We have the new hottest thing, you know, right, waiting right for us to uh, pick them out because they're just right there. There's a whole line going around like thing Hollywood. We got them like, we got them forever. Like, you know, you're not that important. It's like the way they kind of like, you know, uh, kind of go about in their industry and when it comes to like their actors and stuff. Yeah. And like, the corruption there plus the fucking like fucked up lifestyle even to a certain extent of some of these guys and like you know not to mention recently we had a proof of that which was the Epstein list which had a lot of prominent motherfuckers like thing on there so you know I remember um the other lady I was trying to look up her name the uh, the other woman writer that was uh, mm-hmm. a cast writer on the Amanda show and a yeah. staff writer on the Amanda show and all that <sighs> how she was saying like if this is how the women are being treated and they have no way out besides just like quitting mm-hmm. or whatever, imagine how much more pressure or how much worse it would feel on a child if this is how this fucking prick is making the adult women writers feel. Really, the first episode mostly is like about like revealing like the dark side of it and like, you know, mainly what Snyder did to the women writers, which is stuff I didn't even know about. I'm actually mm-hmm. glad they opened up with that one, really. That that was, like, new information to me, really. Like, making Christy Stratton bend over the desk and pretending to sodomize her and stuff in mm-hmm. the middle of the fucking writer's room in front of the other woman writer. I feel really bad for, for like, not remembering her name right now. I'm trying to mm-hmm. look it up and seeing if it's in the fucking credits of the episode or some shit, but... There was one part of the interview where she got asked, like, hey, would you, like, talk about that? And she said, no. I don't yep. think I will. Like, and like I don't. I don't blame her at all oh, for yeah. it. And like, One of them was uh, Katrina Johnson, and the other was um, Jenny Kilgan. I think her Jenny name Kilgan. was okay. Jenny Jenny Kilgan. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Now I, I was trying to remember G- uh, Jenny Kilgan. I believe. <sighs> yeah. Christ Almighty. It, it like it really just it was just another classic expose of like some stuff that we already knew, but like a good chunk of information that we didn't really so that's mm-hmm. i really think this documentary hit all nails on the head in that front not not even just from its tone but i really thought it was just going to be a regurg- uh, regurgitation that was only going to be watched by the internet dwellers that like knew this shit about schneider from years from the twitter threads and whatnot mm-hmm. and like the youtube um the youtube uh essays and documentaries that people make i thought it was just going to be like hey now it's in the mainstream from like this thing that these private investigators or like you know these you know private quote-unquote investigators like youtubers and creators and like just twitter people did but nope no, it wasn't that. It revealed new information as well on top of, like, you know, getting that message out to a grander audience. So, Nickelodeon is already not in its golden age anymore. So, <laughs> it, they've, they've been gone from that forever. So, They're I not don't irrelevant, know. but, like, they're definitely not, yeah, as prominent as they once were, like, years before. Kids are on TikTok. Us. Yeah. <laughs> and not to mention even, like, kind of all the newer shows that we kind of know them for. I kind of know some of them. I don't watch them, obviously, but, like, I know some of them, and, like, I feel as if I see those and I just kind of think like, you're just grasping on straws now here. Like you're just grasping for like whatever golden age y'all had so dearly that like, you know, they just can't also evolve. I feel like Nickelodeon, like I almost say like, you know, as far as like, I, I have more high hopes for the animated studios than act, than their actual, like, you know, little teen and kids uh, live action shows. I would like to hope to- that they outsource those to all sorts of different kinds of people, but Ren and Stimpy was made by a pedophile. Uh, yeah, that is true. <laughs> I forgot that. And there's some other darker shit where, like, I believe uh, some documentary I watched with Dre Charles, shoutouts to them, at, like, four in the morning, we watched that at, his, at uh, their place, and, uh... Yeah, there there were some fucked up people working on those shows as well. Like I remember there was this one like fucking uh there was this one what what's the word? Storyboard that for not an actual episode of Rugrats that they made for shits. That mm-hmm. the actual like storyboard artist of Rugrats made of um Amanda getting or what was it? Angelica, the character's uh-huh. name, my bad, getting like copiously turned on by Stu and Stu telling her that as soon as she becomes an adult, I'm gonna fuck the shit out of you. I forget. I, I gotta get Dre to send me that YouTube doc Holy again. Holy shit! Yeah, no, they got pedophiles working on them shits too, brother. Nickelodeon is just 
Yeah. And it's, it, it's just yeah, Grande too. I mean, obviously they they there's oh, no way they, yeah. there's no way they could have gotten Ariana Grande. And truth be told, knowing what we know about Ariana Grande, I doubt she even gives a shit knowing where she is now in life with how huge of a star she is and whatnot. But the, oh my god, her on Victorious. Even as a kid, I was watching Victorious yeah. and the scene where like they're spraying like the like the all the boys are spraying the water bottles on her. Even as a yeah. child, I'm sitting here like. Yeah, this is meant to be like sex. <laughs> this is sex. Even this as a sex. kid, a twelve-year-old kid, yeah. or however old I was when Victorious was on TV, watching that show, even I knew that that's the message they were trying to portray. Because I wasn't that stupid, or kids are getting smarter, or whatever. Oh my god, the stuff she puts her foot in her mouth, the potato shit, where like she's grabbing that. <sighs> that's she's on the, the bed. Oh my <sighs> god, all the fucking money shots and shit, like they, where they squirted that shit on Jamie Lynn Spears' you face. Th- can I? Can like, I ask you? You think she's fucked up? Ariana? I know she's fucked up. We well, like, all you know, think she, she we all know like, she's fucked up. Pete Davidson what? had a whole fucking comedy special about how fucked up Ariana Grande is. I did granted, not know that. I didn't granted, know that. he was a jaded ex-boyfriend. So, like, he wasn't yeah. doing it to be like, oh, she's fucked up, go help her. Like, it was a she's fucked up, I fucking hate her. <laughs> the kind of ah, thing, yeah. Ah, okay, okay. Like, he was telling, like, you know, like, prissy little brat stories about Ariana Grande and whatnot. Mm-hmm. But Pete Davidson also has some sort of, like, Hollywood secret or some sort of pheromone that he sprays on himself that's just some sort of, like, <laughs> he protuberant... He bagged him. He bagged Ariana. <laughs> some sort of protuberant aphrodisiac or whatnot. Oh, what's, uh, Ice Spice as well. That, uh, that, ra- that rapper that, like, all, like, a lot of people are obsessed with. He, he fucked <gasps> her, too. About to fuck all of Hollywood, honestly, before he dies. I think there were rumors that he fucked Martha Stewart, which would just be funny if that was true. I mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised about That'd that. That'd be funny as Martha hell. Martha Stewart looked like she just looks at anyone and just says, I want to fuck you. And then that's it. You're just going to fuck Martha Stewart and you're going to do what she says because it's Martha Stewart. <laughs> no, no, I wouldn't fuck her. I'd say no. She creeps me out. <laughs> or, at least, or at least I hope I could say no. But she seems the, the reason she creeps me out is she seems like one of those like Schneider types where she stands in the room and you just feel her presence. No, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. You can't yeah. say no to her, but on the other way out. So, yeah. Christ almighty. Yeah, if you have not watched Quiet on Set, um, it's harrowing. I please, re- I definitely recommend Big that you do it. Big trigger warning, letting y'all know. Yeah. So just um, know what you're getting into if you plan on watching it. Yeah, for me, you know, it's fine. I mean... I've been sexually harassed before. I've never been, like, assaulted, I don't think. But, like, I don't know. Even then, it, like, it reminded me of that a little bit, but it didn't hit me in the harrowing way that it would do for, like, actual legitimate victims of, like, sexual abuse and violence and whatnot, yeah. which I can... I think I can pretty safely say that I'm not, for the most part. You know, I remember at the American Dream Mall, which I used to work for. One of the reasons I fucking hate it is because, like, I... Stuff like that did happen to me once. There was this dude who was mad creepy, would always try to get me to come to his place and smoke weed with him. And one time when I was standing, like, facing towards my kiosk, he just went up behind me and bumped against me with his body and then just walked away, like, smiling. And it made me feel insanely uncomfortable and whatnot. And, you know, Weirdo. it was, like, many times... Yeah, no, no, I could... Yeah, he was, he was fucking... He was he was weird. He was, was trying a little to get, off. Was a little, he was trying funny he, about him. No, he was trying to get with me. And this other dude who like once like motorboated my stomach after I told him not to do it, and I literally had to push him off of me. Really like horrible shit. And um, so I could relate to it a little bit in that sense, but like it's still I feel like they, for these kids it was constant. And also they're yeah. younger, way younger than me. I was twenty five at the time. It's different. I could be like fuck you, get the fuck off of me. I'm also six foot five. It's it's different. It's power dynamic as I guess a little different in that department as opposed to a mm-hmm. literal small child hanging around this big fat tubby McFat fuck fuck bitch in Schneider. I, it's it's all <sighs> Whatever you do, like so to watch Quiet on set, don't watch the interview that, that you know, YouTuber or whatever did with Dan Schneider. It's, I've seen bits and pieces of it. It is the most nothing burger. Like, uh, it's the most nothing burger. I want to foster a safe environment. But I would have done some things differently back then. It's such a nothing burger. He doesn't address any of the things that have actually been accused against him. And, and, the, and like, in the mid-bit, uh, the mid-bits of this, uh, the documentary, like, with the, uh, the text and whatnot, there was so much stuff that Dan Schneider just straight up said, like, yeah, I didn't do that. Like, he claimed that, like, I remember when, like, Nickelodeon was, like, slowly weaning him out. And like the yeah, last yeah. episode when they were saying like, you cannot be anywhere near the fucking kids anymore. We're mm-hmm. not firing you yet though, because we need you and you're making us too yeah, much money. Exactly. He claims he did that out of his own volition. 
He claims the producers didn't ask him to, like, get away from the kids. Like, he denied so much shit. It's crazy. Ugh. Honestly. Watch Quiet on set. It's harrowing. Uh, again, trigger warning. Same ones we're putting on this episode. Um, Brian Peck should be dragged out of the street and shot. And I'm not even joking yeah. about that. Like, he should, he should actually be, be dragged out and stoned. He should be he actually publicly executed. Schneider should yeah. be too, if we're being real. As well as Jason Handy. But is Handy still in prison? I forget what his story was. I have no idea. At actually. this point. I, I actually have no idea. I almost don't even want to look it up. <laughs> no, I'm going to I'm gonna look it up right now. I need to know, is Jason Handy still in jail? Handy, it, oh. Handy is now incarcerated at the Federal Correctional Institution in Petersburg, Virginia. His release date is August 28th, 2038. So he's still going to be in prison for like 14 more years. So he may get shivved anything he probably already did prison. real shit he's a pedophile you know what happens to them in prison but what the what the what about peck handy them tried lawyers. to rape people peck actually did it's them lawyers man Fuck. lawyers be too op like, wow i'm not even saying that to meme it really is like the case of that i feel and if you're wondering like, why schneider isn't in jail there's no concrete there's a quote-unquote no concrete evidence that compared he did to any, peck and any compared sexual to assault yeah, yeah compared to the compared to peck and handy who let from what from what we know now were way worse than he was schneider was just a terrible boss made women do weird shit to him we don't know for a fact if he raped anybody yet let alone a child but I'm gonna end it here and saying that I don't give a fuck. He he assaulted he assaulted Bynes. There's no way he didn't. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's absolutely no way he didn't. It's harrowing. Check it out. Um Yeah. Check plugs. out the fifth episode when that drops <laughs> on April 7th. Uh yeah. plugs. If you enjoyed this episode of the Double D Experience, uh, you can follow us wherever you get your podcasts. It's on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts. Want to see our podcast grow on those platforms? Leave us a five-star review on Spotify. And if you want to help us get views where it seems to matter way more for us, you can check us out here on YouTube.com slash Nintunist. Leave a like on the video. Comment what you thought about Quiet on Set. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already. I sp as, like I, I do other things on the channel once in a blue moon, but mainly it's really just the podcast nowadays. And so if you like that, we appreciate all the love you guys have been giving us every week. Last episode almost got to 100 views, which is uh, pretty nice. I expected it to do a little bit better than it did because it was about Twitch e-girls, but, you know, can't, can't win them all, really. The thumbnail was also mm -hmm. crappy. I tried really hard to make it look good, but enough about that. Um, support victims of uh, sexual assault and sexual violence. Uh, reach out push to those... Push for better legislation, too, to punish these fuckers. Push for better uh, legislation to do it. Um, Fucking castrate them, too, while you're at it. Fuck them. Maybe just light the Hollywood Hills on fire. Should be lit on fire. I don't know. But I know you're not going to do that, because then we can't... You're not going to get new episodes of The Last of Us anymore. Maybe don't actually do that, because it's not going to do anything to the Predators. And also, I don't support arson. But, um, I'm not encouraging arson, find these arson, fuckers but... and kill them. Yeah, to find... Yeah. <laughs> Like, like, I hope this fuckers, like, meet the finest, like, place in hell when they die. I hope Handy dies in prison. I, I hope he gets shanked I hard hope enough. I that too, yeah. To the point where that happens. Like, but he Peck... touches a guy, like, inappropriately by accident, and then, like, the guy just fucking, like, kills him, like, right then and there. I mean, you know what happens. You, you do know what happens to them. Yeah, I, I mean... He's a registered sex offender, Brian Peck, but the guy just went right back to work. Drake Bell also says he spotted Brian Peck out with underage children since his present release. God, Why? This guy's just walking the streets. Even after getting terminated from Disney Channel's The Sweet Life, Zack and Cody, in 2006, Peck wow. continued to appear in a variety of products, including 2008's Bedtime Stories, 2015's Freaks of Nature, and the 2012 series Anger Management. His last role was in 2018 for a miniseries titled Animal Showdown. Very conveniently, you know, around the time when these stories started to get, you know, revealed online and whatnot, today he reportedly resides in Los Angeles, California. Still touching kids, I see you. We're going to end with this message on screen. If you or someone you know has been a victim of sexual abuse, you can text STRENGTH to the crisis text line. That's at 741741. And you'll be connected to a certified crisis counselor, as well as Googling um, as well as Googling the uh, sexual assault mm -hmm. and sexual uh, harassment hotlines. They, those will reveal the right information to you promptly. We love you all. Um, whatever you're going through, just know that you're not alone. 
I guess I've sort of revealed that I was sexually harassed a little bit in this uh, in this podcast as well. But it was again, My coworkers, like, fuck it was them. so fuck. Well, it could be anyone you know. Peck was so loved. I know, I know. By what everyone I mean. on that yeah. set, he was like the most beloved fucker in there. But again, what I went through was nothing compared to what these fucking oh, kids yeah, did. Yeah. I was also like a they... grown ass man. It's what, different. And let me also just add, yeah, like guys, don't be afraid ever to reach out for help. Like you're worth don't. it. It's worth it in the end, and plus, like, thing, it, it will show you that you're not alone in whatever you're dealing with. So, please, if you are going into anything like this, God forbid, right? Just go and reach out. And we hope, at the very least, like our shitty podcast that was an hour and two minutes, like, thing helped with that at all. So, you know, we're going to say, you know, uh, goodbye here. We'll see you guys next week. Hope you all have a great weekend. And, uh, you know, just don't be afraid to reach out for help, ever. We love y'all.